vehicle is a 2014 Dodge Journey with an engine misfire. This particular vehicle has a 3.6 liter V6. Uh, the customer states that the engine has an in intermittent misfire. Uh, the shop has called us in to look at this vehicle, has installed a new head, but retained the old cams uh, and rocker assemblies. Uh, they describe it as an inconsistent misfire um, while driving down the road. When you're sitting in the bay, you can't really feel too much, but when you take it down uh, the highway, you can feel a slight miss every, uh, every couple seconds. So I think what we're going to do is uh, first start by scanning the vehicle for codes. And uh, after scanning the vehicle, we found two... Um, two active codes, one stored code. Um, the one code that we're going to focus on, I think here is the P0304. Um, as these other two don't really uh, don't really go with a, a misfire. And according to the customer, that ASD code was set during testing, um, so they must either have still something unplugged or uh, something like that for that ASD code, but uh, we're, we're just going to focus on the 304 code right now. Um, we're going to first check for spark and injector pulse. So we verified spark with a visual spark tester. We were able to uh, make the spark jump a 30 kV gap, which uh, indicates that the coil is good and strong. And uh, we also checked injector pulse with the scope on cylinder four. And we did, uh, we checked injector voltage on the control circuit, which is this guy right here. And as you can see on the scope shot, we have a uh, good injector pulse. So it appears that we do have good spark and good injector pulse on this vehicle. The customer did also um, double check that they had good fuel pressure. So um, we, we kind of took that off the table right off the grid right of the gate. So to uh, sum it up, we verified spark and injector pulse. Uh, so now the only thing left is a really a mechanical fault. We have good fuel and good spark. Uh, not much else it can be other than something mechanical. Uh, so we're going to check uh, relative compression and engine vacuum while cranking with the scope. So some of you might be wondering what uh, relative compression is. Uh, so I'll just explain that real quick. Relative compression uh, is a test using an inductive current probe around the battery negative cable to measure current draw by the starter. Uh, an inductive current probe basically just measures the current uh, going through any particular circuit. So in this case, we're going to measure the current going, um, or the current being drawn by the starter. Um, and the reason for that is um, on each compression stroke, the starter is going to draw more current as it's got to fight the resistance um, of the compression. So the higher the compression you have, the higher the current draw, lower the compression, lower current draw. Uh, now I'm sure some of you are also wondering what a vacuum transducer is. Um, vacuum transducer is required to check engine vacuum with the scope. Uh, it basically just grabs the engine vacuum readings uh, to monitor for um, engine mechanical faults. It kind of puts it into a visual for you. Um, so instead of looking at numbers, you're looking at a graph and it's, it's easier to spot issues. So for the inductive current probe, we're going to stick it around the battery negative cable there. And for the vacuum transducer, um, it doesn't actually look like a gauge. I'm just using this as a visual representation here, but uh, it's basically a, um, a little device with a tube on it. And uh, you just plug it in anywhere where you'd find engine vacuums. So on this vehicle, the easiest spot was at the, uh, the brake booster. Just disconnect the vacuum hose from the brake booster and uh, throw the vacuum transducer in the hose coming off of the uh, engine. So what we have here is our um, scope shot. The top trace there in the green is our injector pulse. We use that as a reference. Uh, the red trace and the blue trace are our relative compression and our vacuum trace. Each spike in current is when the starter is loaded up due to a cylinder on its compression stroke. The starter must work harder to overcome the force of compression, drawing more current momentarily on each compression stroke. So that's what we're talking about here. Each spike here is a spike in current. And that's each compression stroke. Each dip in the vacuum trace is when an intake valve is opening on the intake stroke, draws the intake into a vacuum, which is measured by the transducer. Again, that's each dip here. 
every time you get a dip in the trace, that is uh, an intake valve opening, creating a vacuum in the, uh, in the intake. So our current probe scale is set at 10 millivolts uh, equals one amp. Uh, these things have different scales on them depending on how much current you're measuring. Um, and you kinda gotta, kinda gotta know how much current is gonna roughly be in the circuit. So on a starter, we know we're gonna have over 100 amps of current, so we have to set it on a uh, <clears throat> on a, a specific scale, in this case 10 millivolts uh, equals one amp. So uh, the starters are drawing approximately 140 amps. Um, we kind of average it out through the middle here and uh, on average say it's about 140 amps. Relative compression and vacuum appears to be okay here. We don't see any discrepancies or any uh, any issues in the waveform. However, during cranking, before having all the scope and everything hooked up, you could hear an audible difference in cranking sound occasionally. Um, so what I'm kind of describing here is it kind of sounds like the engine starts turning over more quickly for a split second. It's kind of the best way I can describe it. It just, it just didn't sound right. It didn't sound normal. So we decided to crank the engine until the sound is heard again while we have the scope hooked up. During cranking, we saw this on both the relative compression and the vacuum trace. Starter current draw dropped by about 20 amps for a split second. Starter will draw less current momentarily if there is a compression or valve sealing issue. Does not need to work as hard if there was low compression. So it kind of looks like we may be dealing with a low compression issue on this vehicle. As it drops down to about uh, 120 amps rather than the 140 that we were measuring before. And as you can see here, it doesn't pull the intake into into quite the same amount of vacuum as each other pull here. So the vacuum trace also shows a slight decrease in vacuum around the same time we saw a decrease in starter current draw. The vacuum is abnormally low momentarily. This generally indicates a valve train issue, we, valve timing is off, valve lift is off, valve duration is off, etc. To pinpoint our issue, we're gonna measure cylinder compression with a pressure transducer. Pressure transducer is kind of the same as a vacuum transducer, except this measures higher pressure as well as vacuum. Uh, we're just going to insert it in where the spark plug is. It comes with a special adapter and a tube um, that goes in, that screws into where the spark plug goes and allows us to measure in cylinder pressure. Uh, this allows us to measure valve timing, valve duration, and compression all at once as it graphs compression and you can tell when the valves are opening um, for how long, et cetera. We can compare this to a known good cylinder as well. So this is our first in-cylinder compression scope shot. And this is a compression scope shot from a known good cylinder. Now the first thing I noticed is between number four and number one. On this one, the compression is inconsistent. It's all over the map. Ranges from anywhere from about 50, 50 PSI up to about 66 PSI. Now these pulses here, um, this each pulse here is the um, compression stroke. Go, on the upward slope is a compression stroke. Downward slope is the uh, power stroke. This little tick in pressure here, it looks like an, up, uh, an uptick in pressure, but it's sitting right around the zero PSI mark. That is our um, exhaust stroke and then where it dips down into the negative pressure here or vacuum, this is our intake stroke. So when we see inconsistent, um, inconsistent compression like this, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, the valve isn't opening enough or isn't staying open long enough, not allowing the cylinder to charge properly. So the in-cylinder compression test shows that we have an intermittent valve duration slash lift issue. The intake valve is intermittently not opening or staying open long enough not allowing the cylinder to charge properly. Less air you have coming into the engine, the less compression you're gonna have. This vehicle does not have variable valve lift or variable valve duration adjustment capabilities. Now to be fair, no vehicles have variable valve duration adjustment yet. Uh, I believe there is a new one out on the market right now. Um, I think it's Hyundai that's coming up with variable valve duration. Um, and we'll, we will likely explain that in another video as, uh, um, I'm sure they will fail and we will have to diagnose those as well. But uh, for now, um, 
there's really no variable valve duration um, adjustment capabilities on any engine, but there are variable valve lift adjustments. And there are variable valve lift adjustments on Chrysler vehicles, just not this engine. So that kind of tells us we're going to have an actual mechanical fault with this vehicle and not so much a, um, a control issue with a variable valve system. So in this case, um, you'd want to check for uh, worn or damaged cam lobes, worn or damaged rocker arm rollers, or worn or damaged uh, bearings for the rocker arm rollers. Now it's likely not going to be a damaged cam lobe as that would be more consistent. Um, but if we do have uh, a flat spot on a roller rocker uh, or damaged bearings or something like that, um, that could definitely cause the inconsistent issue that we're having. Now, in the case of this vehicle, it was uh, damaged bearings in the roller rocker arms. And um, I'll just show you a quick video of the uh, damaged part that we found on this engine. 